appreciated coming to you this wonderful time. Good evening to every one of you. My name is Apostle Helen Rudokeno, and I bring the compliments of the season to you and your noble family. I thank God for what he is doing in this part of the world at a season like this and what he's also doing in your part of the world. This is a joyful time. It's a joyful season. Make sure you enjoy the best of it. Why? Because Jesus Christ, our Lord, is alive. Hallelujah. I am bringing the message once again to you, which I have entitled, Remembering God's Goodness. Ah, it is awesome. Shall we pray? Father God, I bless you. I'm so excited to meet this audience again this time. And I bless you for, for, for the gift of life you've given unto us and our families and our loved ones. And also to those who are partners of Majesty Christian Television Network. I thank you, God, that it is only you who have brought us from January till this month that we are in today. And we are grateful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Possess this hour and use it for the glory of your name. Cause our hearers, so God, to be blessed even as we preach together. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Once again, my name is Apostle Helen Rose Dokken. And whenever I am in this uh, Majesty Christian Television Network, I'm very excited because I see God doing something new through this channel and taking the word of God we are preaching globally. And for information, I want you to know that that which looks so small is, is doing great in the kingdom of God at a time like this. We've reached 67 countries of the world as I'm speaking to you and it is a very, very good place to say amen and those of you who are out there i want you to encourage majesty and continue to support majesty with whatever you have whatsoever gift you can give and so in a fertile ground please do it here in majesty tv it will help us to reach those who cannot be here to preach the gospel they will hear it in afghanistan in morocco in saudi arabia in united kingdom of emirates and the, and the rest of those muslim strongholds so do do if you cannot reach those places send us and we shall go through majesty christian television network thank you now the topic of my uh word of encouragement this season is 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 on remembering god's goodness hallelujah and we are taking our scripture from the book of psalm 103 psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5 so take your bible and let us study the word together amen remembering god's goodness this is the time to remember all that god have done in our life this is the time and the season that we're supposed to appreciate god and appreciate also those who are in our lives this is the time of sharing it's the time of gratitude it is a time to have a reflection it's time to be able to, to, to acknowledge what god did which you know that only god because if God didn't come to do it at a particular time, you and me would have been a very terrible mess. But God stepped in at the very hour and at the very moment which we wanted him. And today we are seen today and, and we are joyful and, and we, we could not be put to shame. So it's a very good time to say thank you to God. Hallelujah. Because when we fail to say thank you, then we are not being appreciated. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 103, and I read from verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle? Hmm. The Bible is encouraging us to bless the Lord. The Bible is encouraging us to, 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 to remember where God brought us from. Now, the psalmist or the psalm, this very scripture I've read, is a lyric from uh, the Old Testament. And it is, it is, it is it's been recited like a song. It, it was written by a man that God called he, the, the David be the Beloved. He is known as a man after God's own heart. Why? Because this man loved the Lord and loved the Lord and loved the Lord so 
much that he it was attributed to him as a man after God's heart. Hallelujah. David was a king. David was a warrior. David was uh, a ruler. And David had all it could take to, to, to live a very joyful life. He was able to marry as many wives as he would have liked to marry, had so many children. He had his own kingdom and he ruled in, 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 in among people. So people loved him. He was also a man that was who had several wars. He fought so many enemies from different angles. Even uh, there was a time that his own enemy was found in his own house among his own children. His son rose up against him, had to go and sleep even with his concubines openly so that the whole world could know that yes, 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 I, I, he was in the uh, da, in dialogue or in, in, in this, um, he was in longer heads, I beg your pardon, with his own father. So the mess of the king was also brought outside and everybody knew that oh, Absalom had really defied his father's uh, concubines. So, you see, this guy went through, the man called David went through a, a lot of go, go, go greatness and also went through a lot of turbulence, even to the point that he was chased out of his own palace, chased out of his own house. But did that make him to stop glorifying God? No. He still loved God because eventually God restored him and God put all his enemies under his feet. And uh, this man called King David was wondering he, that, that how would he be able to forget everything that God have done for him? How would he be able to pay God back? How would he be able to, to, to let generation upon generation know that God is steadfast? He decided, he said, I'm not just going to build only a house or build a temple for God or, 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 or build a dynasty uh, for my kingdom, but I'm just going to write some lyrics so that I from year to year, when people will pass through from generation to generation, they will read this. It will be documented. I'll give God that which is very memorable, something that is lasting, so that when people come from generation to generation, they are going to read and they are going to sing this song, which I've, I've just read from the book of Psalm 103, and they are going to lift up holy hands to worship God. Oh, hallelujah. I wish that we have men of this time. I wish we have men in our, in our own modern time who will say they just want to serve God. They just want to do something which is memorable without which is lasting. Which when people come from generation to generation, they will always look at that thing and then they will glorify God. What was it that David decided to do? He said okay, I'm going to write this song so that from time to time when people come come into a place of difficulty when people come to a place as well where they've been lifted and where they have become so high minded they will remember that it is God who brought them. They will remember their humble beginning. They will remember some little little things which we are forgetting but only God could have given us the grace to do those things. He said I'm going to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He began to address his soul. He said soul I will bless the Lord. Why the soul? Because the soul is in between the soul, when the flesh is, uh, the body is so heavy, the soul can also be at a part of the body. When the spirit man is very lifted, the soul can also be at the side of the spirit. So it's just an in-between. So in the soul, that's where we have all the emotions and all the, all the, all the, 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 the what, pride and uh, have all the loss, all the, 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 we feel joyful. It's all in the soul. So it's all also in the soul that we are living lifted up and then we try to look down on people and we try to you know attribute success to ourselves all is within the soul so david said i'm not going to lie to my soul i'll let my soul be in accordance with my spirit to glorify god he said bless the lord oh my soul my soul bless the lord so that you don't get puffed up you don't think that uh, i just started as a king i started as a little boy a shepherd boy that's from where god brought me from the backyard god brought me and put me in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the front row put me in, in in the realms of the front where i am now 
and visibly and, and, and people can know me as a king and not only that I have a deep covenant with God why because he brought me all the way from the back and made me somebody very unique so bless the Lord oh my soul he was talking to his soul not to be lifted up he was talking to his soul not to think that all the achievement he has gotten in life is because of his technical know-how he was talking to his soul to be very cautious not to you not to be lifted up to think that this ability to war and to conquer all the neighboring countries and and to annex them to himself was because of his mind he was talking to himself to his soul to be very cautious that it was god that gave him the grace to be successful over his enemies it was god almighty who brought all his enemies under his feet it was his god it was god and god alone i'm talking about elohim right now as i'm speaking i just want to to to, to talk to those who will appreciate god another it's god who have given them the grace to go through this whole year or up to this moment that is god and enabled them throughout the time you were flying from one country to another country it wasn't by your mind not by your power it wasn't because of the fact that you had a very suitable uh, pilot but it's just the grace of the lord hallelujah I'm talking to people who just want to pause a second and say, Oh, my soul, don't be lifted up. The brain that I have, which is making me to present seminars and, 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 and conferences and be a, a, a good a motivational speaker, it's not because of how articulated I was. Rather, it is just God who has given me the grace to live. Hallelujah. It is nothing but the Lord. So when the soul wants to get in between what God is doing, you are a spiritual man supposed to address your soul and let your soul know that it is nothing but God and God alone hallelujah I just want to hear preach on baby girl preach on preach on hallelujah I feel excited because it's a moment somewhere there is somebody out there it's a moment to be grateful to God a moment to remember that it is God who made me so beautiful oh I cannot just help being excited I just looked at myself and I said to my husband so a few minutes ago I said I don't know why God loved me so much why did he deposit such beauty upon me why did he make my body so smooth why has he given me this fantastic figure i can only say thank you lord for who you are hallelujah because if it were to be men that would have molded me that would have ah some of them would have painted me too black and some of them i'm, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong in being too black and some of them would have painted me beyond recognition but i thank god that he really performed such a work upon my life and i give him praise hallelujah Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the psalmist uh, who, who saw that it was God that was his source of everything decided to say to his soul, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And bless the Lord, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. All that is within me means everything around me because he didn't want a situation where he would take any iota of the glory for himself. He said everything around me those who surround me, those who are just seeing me at this final product, you still got to bless God because you needed to see me when I have not yet been processed. You needed to see me when God dug me up from the valley and I was still filled with dirtiness, filled with all impurity. And today, look at what God has done. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And why do we need to? He said, and because we don't need to forget his benefit. He said, as I'm telling you, soul, to bless God, do not forget his benefit. God has done something for you. You that is out there whining your mouth, I want you to know that God has done something to you. Do you also that is busy cruising your life as if you don't have anybody uh, that is superior to you apart from yourself? I want you to remember vividly that it is God who has given you the ability. Even the concentration to be able to drive from one location to another, it is God who have given it. Because the moment he allows any disease to mess up that brain, oh, you will be what nothing. And that's the reason why both the astrologers, both the scientists, and both all of those who say they are educated folks, join me and praise the Lord. Join me and give God the glory. I was just coming out from a place where a man who was very, very gifted in music and playing lyrics of every type of music, he was just say that he doesn't believe in God, but he believes in the Son. Can you imagine that? That is what stupid
stupidity can cause. That is what, you know, ungodliness can cause. It will make God, make people, instead of them giving honor that is due to God, to God the Creator, they will begin to worship the Creator things. I wish that as we celebrate this season, as we go through this season, that you will not give the honor that belongs unto God to inanimate objects. You will not give them to created beings. Give honor to whom honor is due. Honor is due unto God at a time like this. Hallelujah. Forget not the benefits of the Lord. And what are the benefits? He said, who forgiveth all thy iniquities? My God. Do you understand that it's only God that has the power to forgive all our iniquities? Iniquity is talking about the root of sin. Like if when people go and they carry, recently they were talking about, or uh, 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 throughout this year, there have been so many sprays of God in, in America and in different other parts of the world where youths will just carry gun and go and spray on their teachers and spray on fellow students you see so we see that and we call that uh, 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 sinful but they thought before that person could go to go and carry gun and begin to spray they thought before the sin is called iniquity the root the root that which led a little boy to carry gun to begin to spray is what is called iniquity. And that could uh, that could be as a reason of unforgiveness. That could be as a reason of bitterness. That could be as a reason of maybe inferiority complex. Probably some of these people uh, do not like other people to challenge them. So he, the person must have gone home, processed it and said, no, I don't want my teacher to challenge me anymore. Or the person can put back in the in the heart and say, "This teacher, I didn't like the way this, this, this teacher reacted to me and made me look little." So because of that, the person felt very very bad and then harbored pain, bitterness for 24 hours or some days, and then decided that okay, the, the best thing to do would be to take the life of that teacher. You see, that 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 season and that process of that bitterness is what is called iniquity. When iniquity is not plugged out, iniquity is the root cause of sin. When it is not plugged out, sin will continue to manifest. Are you hearing me, somebody? You see, people don't just get up to go and murder. When people begin to murder, they have jealousy, they have pain, they have bitterness. Those are what is called the iniquity. And it is only God that can uproot iniquity. So the psalmist realized that he has been through a lot in life. He has gone through a lot in life that if he will open up his mouth, he would not even be able to write down everything he went through. Can I tell you something? You even think about it a little bit. How a man can stay and watch his own concubine being, being, you know, being, 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 being slapped by a son. I mean, that could be very, very hazardous. It's horrible. But somebody like David witnessed all of this. Thing. So, he witnessed betrayal of some friends. He witnessed uh, he witnessed those who were supposed to be in his camp going over to the camp of the enemy. And in all of this, he would have had a lot of bitterness. In all of this, he would have rejected himself. In all of this, he would have maybe said, okay, I don't serve God anymore. So he knew what it takes to be rejected. And he knew what it takes to have pain and bitterness. So he realized that only God could have helped him to offload bitterness when it came. Because if not that God helped him, he wouldn't have been able to be a man after God's heart. So he said, God is the one, one of the benefits that God is the one who helps him to what? Who helps him, who forgiveth him in all iniquities. He said, who forgiveth all my iniquities, who healeth all my diseases. That's another benefit. This is another reason for us to thank God at a time like this. Who healed us in all our diseases. Not only forgiving you. Now let me revisit the side of forgiveness of our iniquities. You see, when you carry a burden, the burden of sin, or you carry the burden of, 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 of have you ever felt guilty before? Have you ever felt guilty? Maybe you did something that is very wrong. Some of you who like to sleep with other people's wives, probably you went and you slept with other people's wives, or you slept with another person's husband, and you were caught, and you were reported to your husband. Do you know how you feel? The guilt alone is enough to kill you. But the Bible, so there are people who, if they will open up their mouth and say the guilt that they are carrying, even when people have forgiven them, for the fact that you have a, a flash short a time, remembering that sin that you committed, is enough to kill. 
So, the psalmist is saying here, I believe that he remembered how he must have slept with Bathsheba and how the sin of Bathsheba would have weighed him down after he has killed Uriah and took over Bathsheba. How the whole talk all over the village. How, how he felt when that, that prophet came to, to bring conviction to him. And so, he must have remembered the weightiness of that sin. And how and how God eventually over over overrolled rolled away that sin and forgave him. So this man he had a right to write such a song. He had a right to refer on us back to our past to let us know that only God Almighty could have forgiven iniquity. Only God. I'm sure he tried to sink himself in the bottle of alcohol and it couldn't help him. If it were to be these days, he maybe he would have been on drugs. But those things cannot help. Have you asked yourself why so many millionaires are killing themselves? Have you asked yourself why they would tell us that they, they, they died when they were taking their shower? Have you asked yourself just because Probably they have taken enough drug for the whole night. Do you know what? It could be the part of sin. There could be something they are trying to look for a way to bury, and that thing refused to be buried. That thing refused to hang, refused to, 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 to hang off their neck. So when they remember, when they are in their normal self and they remember and this was what they did, they don't feel good. So they try to suppress it with alcohol, they try to suppress it with drugs, and the dosage of it or the excess of those things now turns to kill them. Child of God, I want you to look back a little and think about where God brought you from. All that you've been doing, all the things. If heaven will open you up for one second, I believe that you will be totally humbled. Because some of the things you did then, and nobody saw them. And then that's the same reason why you are still looking very cute among those that you are trying to impress. Because if they will open you up, if heaven will open you up, I'm sure you will want me nothing. But God Almighty, even though he was a witness when you did all, he still chose to ignore it. He chose to still give you some time to repent. He chose to, just to still allow you to be the, as beautiful as you are. It is a good time and a good place to say, Lord, I thank you for you are the only one who can cover all my sins. But that, that's not a stake. It's not a yardstick for you to continue to sin. It's not a criteria for you to continue to sin all day long. Repent before you have been trapped. So the psalmist says, I will bless God at all times because this is the same God who taketh away all my sins. He is the Lord who forgiveth all my iniquities and not only that, he healed all my diseases. Just last night, I met a girl who have left our ministry for a long time. And when they were in our, in our ministry, I, we were always having problems of canceling him and her, her and her husband. What was the problem? The man was a man who could not stay with, with, with one, who couldn't stay a night without a woman. Anything on skirt, this man was too crazy about. Meanwhile, in Europe, it's so difficult to get women. So, uh, so nobody knows how he was doing it. So all the time this lady would come to church, she never was satisfied, happy. It was always complain, complain. Oh, pastor, please come and talk to my husband. I every counseling, the man would deny. The man would try to. Uh, when you cancel him this week, you won't see him anymore until the next three months. Then he will just surface again. It will surface again. So I begin to wonder, what, 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 what is really wrong with this sort of person? Who doesn't take counsel at the same time it's not going to be faithful to this woman at the same time he has no work so why would he be bluffing this way so yesterday when i saw this lady and she told me that she traveled to another country to go and stay four years there but i said well, how about your husband he said we are no more we are no more i said what happened he said you know what that uh, she was really looking for a way to conceive and then it took them that process took both of them to go for uh, ivf and then when they went for IVF, it was discovered that uh, the husband was HIV positive. Do you see that? Do you see? So this, uh, she, then she didn't see, she told me, she said, Hallelujah, Apostle. And I said, God, you love me so much. Can you imagine that? They, 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 she said, first and foremost, that she was so astonished. And she asked him, what about me? What about me? What about me? They said, no, you are negative. 
And then she says she reaches Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, she said, in the presence of the doctor, she just knelt down and she said, Look at me. I, I was spared of HIV positive. Beloved. And then I said, Then what happened? She said, Now, the, the man came back that same night and the man began to demand sex. And she said, No, 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 it's not possible. Because we just went to the hospital. He said, The man asked her, So you believe what they told you? The guys, the lady said, Why wouldn't I believe? Are they not doctors? And then the, the, the man threatened and threatened and threatened. And the next thing the man did was just to abandon the home. She said, For the past many years, the man just abandoned home. And the man went to go and be living with another woman. And then the man went about telling people, yes, I can't stay with a, a woman who denies me sexual intercourse. But she's not telling the people, he's not telling the people that he has HIV, he's HIV positive. Can you think about that? So what I'm trying to say is that God is sparing us from heavy diseases. God is sparing you that is watching me right now. I want you to know and to think back how many times you've gone to remove, to remove, remove your undies and remove your, 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 this, to go and tap, tap to steal some sex out down there. You, you try to do it and in a very snappy way, just without your partner knowing. And somehow along the line, maybe you repented, but you have not yet caught up any heavy disease. But look at what God can do. God is the one that has been protecting us. God is the one. Oh, Jesus. Now, look at an innocent person. Maybe you know, the other woman that this, this, this guy has gone to now will be praising God that he has gotten somebody. Oh, he left the woman because the woman could not make babies for her, for him. So he left the woman. Now he's for me. Praise the Lord. But this is the guy now who has HIV. Positive. You see? But God have a way of protecting his own. So the psalmist is saying here, he said, I will bless God at all times. Even in my weakness, even when I have messed up, God protected me and God healed all my diseases. Child of God. Child of God. I'm talking to somebody who just wants to be appreciative to God. I'm talking to somebody who just wants to love God for who God is. I'm talking to somebody who can just have a reflection back and look at your siblings and look at them. Because you can afford to be so holy, but what about your siblings? What about your own children? What about them? What about them? Oh, but this God has been so merciful to heal us all our diseases. There are some who have not been to hospital throughout this whole year. God healed all our diseases. God Almighty deserve to be praised at a time like this. And the psalmist says not only that the God healed him from diseases, but who redeemed our life from destruction. And this is where I'm going to stop for today. Think about what is happening in the world today. Oh, people go to shopping complexes only to be spread bullets. They only to be spread and they met untimely death. Uh, when you and I, God have secured us. God have secured our families. Even those who are in Africa, when I look at those who are plying the, the, the route from Lagos to Nigeria, or oh, Lagos, Nigeria to, to, to the eastern part of the of the of, of Nigeria. That long journey, that express road where people have been dying and dying and dying. When accident happened on those roads, it's, it is all it has always been very fatal. But God has protected our families. God has guided them. God has delivered them. When we went on vacations, I stayed just some few few, few poles, few 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 meters to, 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 to the sea. God delivered us. He didn't allow any volcanic eruption. He didn't allow any tsunami from the water. He delivered us. In the same place where others went and they lost their lives, we have passed through those places many times and God delivered us. Oh, He, del he redeemed our life from the pit of destruction. Child of God, it is a very good time to say thank you. I want you, you may not have gotten everything you needed for this year. You may not have gotten all the contracts you wanted, made all the money you wanted, gotten the best, the best partners you wanted, but for this fact that you are alive, for the fact that your sins are forgiven, for the fact that God saved you from the path of destruction, for the, for the fact alone that it is he who took you out from where diseases 
could have caught you, but he guided you. It's enough to say thank you. I believe that at this point in time, you should go on your knees and thank God for who he is. And thank God for who he is. And bless him for who he is. And he shall be well with your soul. I meet you again on Sunday at the same time. But once again, have a wonderful season. Let the best of this season be your portion and that of your family. In Jesus' name, I bless you as a servant of Jehovah. Thank you for listening. Bye.